we have still uh, about another half hour worth of music for you. So let me share that with you. And uh, let's keep the conversation going on the chat. This is really interesting. So uh, here it goes. Let's go now to the coast of the state of Guerrero. Uh, we continue our journey down the coast of the Pacific, uh, now uh, to the next state, Guerrero and also the state of Oaxaca. We call this the small coast, the Costa Chica of Guerrero. Now, one particular thing about this area uh, is uh, that uh, at one point in the late 1840s, it was populated by uh, a group of people from African descent. Um, in Latin America, uh, slavery uh, of uh, people of African descent was uh, ended at the time of independence, which was in the 1820s. Um, after that, in, by the 1840s, there were um, uh, skilled miners in, uh, in South America that heard about the discovery of a great uh, deposit of gold in California. Uh, we know, all know about the gold rush of the 1849, uh, which not only drew uh, people from Eastern United States traveling across the United States to populate California, but also brought people from China and South America who were traveling up the coast uh, to California. Now, all that gold uh, was not uh, found and some of the uh, black immigrants from South America settled in the west coast of Mexico where they found deposits of silver. And uh, to this day, this population has remained uh, in Mexico and now forms one of Mexico's black uh, populations. Uh, we're going to take you to the area of Tixla, which is this striped area over here, about 100 uh, kilometers in from the ocean. Um, and uh, there's a series of dances where dancers imitate the movements of different animals. Uh, and this is very much done in a style that was imported from uh, the areas of uh, Peru and Chile in South America, where they also dance with a, a handkerchief up in the air. And they use a very peculiar instrument, which is the jawbone of a donkey. This instrument is used by scraping the teeth with a deer antler and also hitting the sides uh, with uh, the fist to make all the teeth vibrate. The name of this song is called La Iguana. Uh, I hope you enjoy it. Ahora acabo de llegar, ahora acabo de llegar, ay sí valedor, a penitas ahora empiezo ay sí.
con esta me despido, la iguanita se acabó. Ya con esta me despido, la iguanita se acabó. No, que se acabe enhorabuena, como no me acabe yo. Que se acabe enhorabuena, como no me acabe yo. Uy, 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 qué guana tan fea. Miren cómo se menea. Uy, 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 qué guana tan loca. Miren cómo abre la boca. Uy, 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 que se sube al palo. Uy, 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 que ya se subió. Uy, 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 que busca su cueva. Uy, 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 que ya le encontró. Uy, 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 que se mete en ella. Uy, 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 que ya se metió. Well, we continue our journey now to the state of Oaxaca. This is the next state as we continue down the coast uh, of the Pacific, going south and east, and we arrive to this area. This is the, the waste of Mexico. This is the thinnest part between the Gulf of Mexico and the Pacific Ocean. This uh, thinner strip of land is, is called an isthmus or an istmo uh, of Tehuantepec. Uh, this is also the area where the two main uh, uh, mountain ranges of Mexico, the Eastern Sierra and the Western and Southern Sierra uh, collide. Uh, so it's a very mountainous region. And uh, in the Istmo de Tehuantepec, uh, we have a great variety of, uh, of music. Distinctly, the piece that we're going to play right now is uh, based on a legend that is quite well known uh, from Mexico of the weeping woman, La Llorona. Uh, this legend speaks of a, of a woman who's, uh, who committed uh, something uh, terrible in her life and her soul uh, did never uh, ascended to heaven but remained on earth in penance. And at night, her voice is heard uh, weeping for her children. Um, so uh, this song is based on that. And we're going to see here um, an introduction called the pineapple blossom, the flor de piña, which is played on the flute uh, as an introduction to La Llorona. La Llorona uh, uh, typically would be played with a, with a large brass ensemble, etc. But also we begin to see the use of the marimba. Uh, so we're going to see that. This is called La Llorona. Enjoy.
No sé qué tienen las flores, llorona las flores del campo santo. No sé qué tienen las flores, llorona las flores del campo santo. Que cuando la Well, as we travel east and south on the Pacific, we reach the end of Mexico. The last state in Mexico is the state of Chiapas. And uh, up in, the, in this uh, area of Mexico, one of the most iconic uh, instruments in uh, Chiapas uh, is the marimba, uh, this uh, wooden xylophone that has become so iconic of uh, the music of Chiapas. Uh, we're going to hear a special uh, arrangement that was recorded by Sones de Mexico a few years ago. Uh, it's called Feria Chapaneca. Enjoy.
The music from the state of Veracruz is called Son Jarocho, the sound of the Jarochos. And Jarocho is the nickname we give to people and things from the state of Veracruz. Let's take a look. Uh, this uh, region of Veracruz, uh, the state of Veracruz, is a long uh, strip of land along the coast of the Gulf of Mexico. And it includes the seaport of Veracruz, the city of Veracruz, also by the same name. Uh, which has been one of the main uh, 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 seaports of Mexico with contact with people from all over the world. Uh, uh, as any major seaport around the world, like uh, New York, New Orleans, uh, Amsterdam, etc., there are places that are very cosmopolitan and have influences of music from all over the world. So it is to be expected that the music of Veracruz also has uh, uh, Spaniard influences, indigenous influences, African influences, all mixed into a very rich uh, style of music. We're going to uh, share with you uh, one of our um, uh, songs uh, from Sones de Mexico that we recorded a few years ago uh, called El Butaquito. And uh, one of the instruments you're going to see uh, featured is uh, this uh, little guitar called Guitarra de Son. Uh, at the beginning of the song. Uh, you also see our dancer tapping on a wooden surface called the tarima uh, and the, the harp uh, playing uh, a, a lot of this music. So I hope you enjoy this. This is called El Butaquito, which means the little stool.
Well, what a grand finale, right? Uh, this takes us to the end of our music geography of Mexico. We have seen so much variety and diversity. Uh, if there is one takeaway from this whole performance, uh, let it be that Mexico is an extremely diverse country. Next time somebody asks you, do you like Mexican music? Perhaps you should answer, which one? All right. Well, that was this is the presentation. Uh, I'm I'm really happy about all the people that have turned out. We have uh, about 80 people on on the on the call, and uh, it that's uh, that's a wonderful thing. Ne the, next to uh, having you attend a concert, someone was asking, "This is uh, this is the very be best next thing." Sometimes we have little people than that one. <laughs> yeah, there's live shows where we have less people than this. Yeah. So yeah. let me invite the members of Sones de Mexico to unmute yourselves and uh, and maybe like we'll take questions uh, from you guys, from the audience. You. You can uh, you can raise your hand like this or you can. Uh... There's a hand over there. Okay, Guadalupe. Yeah, I'm sorry. I gotta talk. It. I was so. Um... Oh. Uplift. I mean, the, the dancing was such an uplifting thing just to watch her, you know, with this natural movement and the celebration. And I think when I think of Mexican music, I think of it as a celebration, but it also, I mean, it encompasses so much, right? But I think, um, you know, being in your class, Juan, I, I think by seeing all of this, it gives me a better sense of what I want to do with my music. My parent, my father, and my grandfather were all musicians and they played multiple music. There was always music in the house, but I was shied away. So now seeing this, I see the purpose and why I am drawn to it so many, so much. So thank you. This was beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you. Well, yeah, thank well, you. Lupe takes guitar lessons from, uh, from us in, on, uh, on Zoom. So mm -hmm. we have now, uh, that's one of the things with COVID, it's opened up our classes. We have students in California, in Zacatecas, Mexico. And uh, so if anyone's interested, uh, you know, come to our website, to sonesdemexico.com, and you can sign up for, for guitar lessons. Uh, Jackie. Yes. I just, I'm, I think this is priceless. This was so beautiful, not only seeing that amazing production, the close-ups that you have, that we can see the expressions of the joy that you have and the whole team has when you perform. It was just extremely touchy, and at least for me, I'm here with my son, who is passionate also about music, and I see many of uh, us with our families over there. It's just not the event and the performance, but the meaning behind the performance that you have created with your team. Thank you for being with us tonight. It has been beautiful. I don't know what to say. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Jackie. Thank you for having us. Yeah, yes, I'd absolutely. Like, I'd like to jump in as well, um, say thank you. Um, 
I've been getting texts from my students in Music 186 Global Popular Music. They were loving the show. Um, it was something that really enhanced the experience, especially since we had so much that wasn't, we weren't able to do this semester. We weren't able to go to concerts. We weren't able to do a lot of the things we normally do. It's so nice at the end of the semester to see something like this that really enhances uh, the curriculum at Miami University and really fed perfectly into uh, what my students and I have been looking at for, uh, for the semester. So I personally like to thank the band. You guys were spectacular. I look forward to seeing you guys in person here, there, or somewhere <laughs> sometime uh, when we can all do that again. Uh, it's really tough. Uh, I've, I have experience with this this semester, tough playing without an audience. And I think uh, Eric actually said that in his comments that it's without the reactions, without seeing the faces of the audience, it's really hard to put so much energy into a show and you guys did. So I want to say thank you very much. Um, I, as a musician, as an ethnomusicologist, loved it. And as a professor, loved it even more. So, thank you so much. Thank you. Gracias. Gracias. Thank I'm you. glad that most of the viewers are from the Latin or Mexican uh, heritage. Garcia, Rioja, and whatever. It sounds that you are the next generation that are um, attending the Latinos mostly and showing the, the Americans uh, our, our culture, which is very good. It's something that we have behind all the times. Whenever we talk with somebody, Garcia or Rioja, we can just talk about our culture, which is the best we can do. Thank you. There are questions or reactions, even, you know, any, uh, any reactions to them, do to you what like you saw. Performance, do you like it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah Matthew likes, um, percussion instruments, particularly el canjón that you mentioned in one of the performance that came from, I didn't know that the Afro-Mexican population actually went there from South America. That was really interesting to know as well. You like it too? Yeah. Okay. Thank well, you. wonderful. Well, I want to thank everybody again for, for showing up and uh, and Jackie, especially, I mean, you went to bat for us. You, uh, uh, you fought uh, with uh, all the powers that be at the university to make it happen. So we are, we're indebted to you for this performance. And Thomas, thanks also for bringing all your students here and uh, contributing to this uh, wonderful gathering. Well, as as uh, my function as a president of Alphas, we're very proud to have uh, been co-sponsors for this event, along with Unidos and the vice president for diversity and inclusion at Miami University. We uh, thank everybody who attended from all over the place. I had a lot of friends and family who joined as well. I'm very grateful for that as well. It's great seeing so many young faces. And Hannah, thank you so much for participating. We have an eight-year-old asking questions. This doesn't <laughs> happen all the time. So uh, again, thank you to the band. Thank you to individually. And Juan, thank you very much for hosting um, so wonderfully this event. Um, we will hopefully see you guys again at Miami University, but hopefully next time in person. Yes. And thank you for all the members of Sones de Mexico. We're, we're also not able to, to gather and rehearse. Uh, so we, we get to see each other on, on Zoom here. So thank you, Eric and Lorena, Victor Sagbe. Yes, I thanks. I agree. <laughs> it's lovely to see you guys. <laughs> and happy Thanksgiving to everyone. Yes, happy holidays. Stay safe. Likewise, yes. Stay safe, stay well. Thank Wear you. Wear your masks and hopefully see you guys in live performance. Hopefully. Gracias. Have a good night, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye.